ألم يأن للذين آمنوا أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with the best in this world and the next Today we're going to be looking at the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he tells us about the last person to enter Jannah and this is an individual who entered the hellfire because they did not do enough to make it to heaven and Allah only knows how long they spent in hell May Allah keep us far, far away from Jahannam. And then after they go through this purification process, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets them out. So let's listen to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The last one to enter paradise will be a man who will walk once, stumble once, and be burned by the fire once. When he gets past it, he will turn to it and say, Blessed be the one who has saved me from you. Allah has given me something that He has not given to the first and the last. He knows that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who saved him from this punishment. Finally, he is let out and he feels as if he is the luckiest person there. A tree will be raised up for him and he will say, O oh Lord, bring me closer to this tree so that I might rest in its shade and drink of his water. This tree will be very attractive to this person. As there is no shade in hell, there is no water that is drinkable in hell. The water in hell is so hot that when a person drinks it, it will burn them and it will melt them. Allah will tell this person, O oh son of Adam, perhaps if I give you that, you will ask me for something else. And this is our nature, that when we are given something, we want more. Especially this person. There is no way he can show patience towards this tree especially after what he's been through. He will say, No, O Lord, and he will promise that he will not ask for anything else, and Allah will excuse him because he has seen something that he cannot help wanting. So he will be brought near to it, and he will shelter in the shade and drink of his water. Then another tree will be raised up for him that is more beautiful than the first. What do you think he's going to do now? So he will say, Ya Rabb, bring me closer to this tree so that I might drink of its water and shelter in its shade. And I will not ask you for anything else. Allah will say, O oh son of Adam, did you not promise me that you would not ask me for anything else? Perhaps if I bring you near to it, you will ask me for something else. And this person will promise that he will not ask for anything else. And Allah will excuse him because he has seen something that he cannot help wanting. So he will be brought near to it and he will shelter in its shade and drink of its water. He cannot handle the beauty of this tree. And he's not even in paradise yet. Then another tree will be raised up for him at the gate of paradise. That is more beautiful than the first two. And he will say, O oh Lord, Bring me closer to this tree so that I might shelter in its shade and drink of its water. And I will not ask you for anything else. So Allah will say, O oh son of Adam, did you not promise me that you would not ask me for anything else? And he will say, No, Ya Allah, I will not ask you for anything else. And Allah will excuse him because he has seen something that he cannot help wanting. Now that he's this close to paradise, he's at the gate, he can hear the voices, he can see inside. What do you think he's going to ask for? He will be brought close to it. And when he draws close to it, he will hear the voices of the people of paradise. And will say, O oh Lord, admit me in it. We all saw that coming, right? Allah will say, O oh son of Adam, what will make you stop asking? Will it please you if I give you the world and as much again? So this man will say, Ya Rabb, are you making fun of me when you are the Lord of the worlds? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give this person a place in paradise that is twice the size of this world. And he is so shocked and taken aback that he thinks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mocking him. Ibn Mas'ud smiled and said, 
Why don't you ask me why I am smiling? They said, why are you smiling? He said, this is how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiled. And they said, why are you smiling, O Messenger of Allah? Because Allah, the Lord of the world, smiled when this person said, are you making fun of me when you are the Lord of the worlds? And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will say, I am not making fun of you, but I am able to do whatever I will. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much that he even smiled at the same point in the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled. And in another narration, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell this person, will you be pleased if you were given a kingdom like one of the kings of this world? So he will say, Raditu Rabbi, I will be pleased. So Allah will tell him, that is for you. And it's like, and it's like, and it's like, and it's like. And during the fifth time, this person will say, Raditu Rabbi, I'm satisfied. So Allah will say that this is for you and ten times its amount. And for you is everything that you could ever desire and want. So he will say, Raditu Rabbi. Allah will give the last person, not the first, but the last person to enter heaven 10 times the size of this world. So what about those individuals who have already entered Jannah without having to be purified? And we don't want to be amongst those individuals who have to go through this purification process. We won't be able to handle it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves us. He wants good for us and He made things easy for us. The main things that we need to adhere to are the five pillars. Acknowledging that there is nobody worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the Prophet sallallahu is his messenger, the final messenger. And to believe in everything that they told us. To establish the prayer. To give the obligatory charity, which is not a lot. To fast during the month of Ramadan and to perform hajj if we're able to once in our lifetime. And if a person is poor and they don't have enough money, Zakat and Hajj are dropped. Until they do have enough money, then it becomes mandatory upon them. So we try our best to stick to our principles, to stick to the foundations of our religion. And we do our best, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy. Every good deed we do is multiplied by 10, up to 700, or even more, as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And every sin is only counted as one. Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the best for us. He chose Islam for us because He wants the best for us. Everything that is good is in our religion. And we all have good in us. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in His Messenger. And we have to stay firm until we leave this world. And do our best so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon us and enters us into paradise where eternal bliss and eternal happiness and only enjoyment wait for us. That which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and that no mind can fathom. And today's exercise is to evaluate our foundations. The five pillars to evaluate them, to see if there's any deficiency, any weakness there, and to strengthen that. The most important thing we need to do is to make sure we uphold that which Allah has made mandatory upon us. We fix that and we do as much good as we can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire, keep us far, far away from it. And may He enter us into Jannah without any accountability. Not only that, may He bless us with Firdaus, the highest of Jannah. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. 